In this video, I'm going to explain the cross-sectional anatomy of a spinal cord and how this relays clinically into what is seen in partial cord injuries. It's a really common question in the FRCS examination and in fact, in my basic sciences viva, I was shown a sagittal fluid sensitive sequence of a post-traumatic syrinx and I was asked to explain uh, what kind of symptoms I would expect the patient to have. So first of all, when you draw the spinal cord, you would draw uh, something like this, uh, where this is the white matter of the spinal cord. And then in the central portion, you have almost like a, a butterfly area of gray matter. So the gray matter is the area where you have all your cell bodies and the white matter is where you have your uh, axons. And at the back, you have your dorsal median sulcus. And at the front, you have a more uh, larger ventral median fissure. In the center, you have your central canal. Um, and as I said, in, in the gray matter, these are your cell bodies. So here you have your anterior horn cells and here you have your dorsal horn cells. So you have to be able to label up the, the various parts of the cross-sectional anatomy of the spinal cord and, and broadly speaking, so if this is dorsal, uh, this is ventral or anterior. Uh, here you have your anterior spinal artery. So if we start from dorsal to ventral, on the dorsal side, you have your dorsal columns. And uh, in, in your dorsal column, you need to know that this supplies your proprioception. Oh, sorry, proprioception. Uh, this also supplies your vibration sense and also your light touch or fine touch, same thing. So that's what your dorsal column does. Over here on the lateral side, you'll have your lateral corticospinal tracts, and you'll also have your lateral spinothalamic tracts, uh, spinothalamic tracts. And um, your, your lateral corticospinal tracts um, supply uh, voluntary control uh, to, to the muscles, and that normally supplies uh, voluntary control to, to the limbs. And your lateral spinothalamic tracts, uh, they supply pain and temperature sensation. And anteriorly, you'll have your anterior corticospinal tracts, and then you'll also have your anterior spinothalamic tracts. And um, your anterior spinothalamic tracts, they, they supply crude touch or deep touch, and your anterior corticospinal tracts uh, supplies mainly uh, the kind of uh, voluntary control to the axial muscles, so everything that's not the limb. But um, you, you see here on your lateral tracks, they are split, they are divided into three distinct areas. And uh, the more central you go uh, is usually, is where the supply is to the arms, and then the center is the trunks, and then more peripherally, you, you get to the, uh, to the lower limbs, the legs. So with this in mind, um, you can then start to begin to understand how partial cord injuries come about. The, the last thing to mention on, on these tracks also is where they, where they decussate or where they cross over. Now, the, the dorsal column tracks and the, cor uh, and the corticospinal tracks, they, they both decussate in the, uh, in the midbrain, in, in the medulla of the midbrain. Whereas the spinothalamic tracts they decussate from uh, one or two levels below uh, the level of, uh, if, if you had a lesion here, uh, they, they would actually decussate one or two levels below from the other side. Um, uh, typically, 
typically two levels below. So when we think about uh, partial cord injuries, so partial cord injuries is um, everything that uh, would uh, exhibit, uh, so sac sacral sparing. Um, so here, if I just write out partial cord injuries, and I think of uh, partial cord injuries as four, four main types. And I would start to list them from the best prognosis to the worst prognosis down here. So in this, in this fashion. So the first uh, partial cord injury uh, would be brown saccade. And this has the uh, best best prognosis. It's, um, it's typically as a result of penetrating injury and it's a hemisection of the cord. So with this diagram in mind you can you can understand if, if I if you had a hemisection of the cord with a penetrating injury on this side you would have you would expect to find that they had a reduction in ipsilateral proprioception vibration uh, light and fine touch along with ipsilateral loss of motor control, however, contralateral loss of pain, temperature, and crude touch, but typically two levels below the level of lesion. Um, and, and this is what you, you have to explain to the examiner and, and using this diagram to explain it. So that's Brown's card syndrome, carrying the best prognosis. The second syndrome you need to know about is your central cord syndrome. And your central cord syndrome is, um, is the most common. So this is the most common syndrome. So I'm going to put here most common. And it typically happens in the elderly uh, as a result of a hyperextension injury and is believed to uh, be a result of uh, injury to the central part of the cord uh, due to edema. And if you use this diagram to explain what typically happens, you can see here that the, the arms are more central than, than the legs. So you typically get um, more motor weakness uh, in the upper limbs compared to the lower limbs. And further down the line, you'd also uh, expect uh, patients to have uh, upper motor neuron signs in the lower limbs and lower motor neuron signs in the upper limbs. And this carries a, a reasonable prognosis or a fair prognosis, which comes in second. The third partial cord injury is your posterior cord syndrome. Now your posterior cord syndrome is, a, is, a, is very rare, it's the rarest out of the four. And, um, and typically you get uh, loss of your dorsal columns with relatively sparing of your anterior structures. So you'd have sparing of your motor control, pain temperature and crude touch. However, you would lose bilateral proprioception, vibration, light and fine touch with your posterior cord syndrome. However, this is, this is very rare. Your last uh, syndrome to know about is your anterior cord syndrome. Your anterior cord syndrome uh, is usually as a result of a flexion compression injury to the anterior spinal artery. And the anterior spinal artery supplies the anterior two thirds of the spinal cord. So as a result of this, you, you actually uh, typically get uh, loss of your corticospinal and your spinothalamic tracts, but relatively sparing of your dorsal column. So you get, you, you, you would have intact proprioception, vibration, and light touch, However, you would get loss of pain, temperature, crude touch, and uh, voluntary control to your limbs. However, the, um, the typical findings are because the, uh, the, the blood supply comes from the periphery into the center, you typically get your lower, uh, your, your legs more affected than your upper limbs. So your lower limbs are more affected than your upper limbs. And, um, and this does indeed carry the worst prognosis. So coming back to the original question that I was asked about uh, the post-traumatic syrinx. Um, so I explained that uh, a syrinx is a fluid-filled uh, 
uh, cavity within the center portion of the cord, and this was evident on the MRI scan that they showed us. And, and I think all they wanted was um, to explain this diagram and to say that the symptoms that you expect the patient to have would be that similar of a central cord syndrome because the, the, the fluid uh, in the center of cord would exert uh, a, a central pressure.